sidewalk and there was a death of a young boy that was sitting on your sidewalk that was had been brutally murdered and been sat out on the sidewalk we got a lot to pray for a church we have a lot to pray for a church our youth and our young men are dying they're getting in trouble they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing but where is the church we have a responsibility for us to be praying and fasting for our youth. It takes a village in order to raise these youth and our young people. It's time out for them dying and getting in gangs and doing things that they shouldn't be doing. I challenge you to come go with me one time down to our juvenile detention center to see our youth and our young men that are locked up. These young men shouldn't be there. They should be in church, serving God on the media squad, singing with Sister Johnson, learning things about God. They should not be incarcerated or in jail. There are young men, 13 years old, that are facing life, getting ready to go to, getting ready to, go to court, and in order that they're going to be facing life in prison. 13 years old. He'll never ride a bicycle again. He'll never have an opportunity to become a man or have a family. So church, let us continue to go on our knees. Church, let us continue to pray. Let us continue to fast. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together you, for the best group on this side of the Mississippi. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the sounds of Lakeisha Johnson and the sounds of Judah. Praise the Lord. Amen, church. Hallelujah. He said that was a free commercial. Well, we are one sound, one body. Amen. 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 I'm just a vessel of God. I'm just a vessel of him that he pours. I pour out everything and he refills me back up. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for God, the praising that fights their way. Amen. Through traffic. Amen. They be with kids all day to give God some praise. Amen. So if you don't mind waving across the room to somebody, turn around. If somebody that came in, wave to them as well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're glad to be in God's house on this Wednesday night. Glory. Come put those hands together. Glory. Oh, give thanks. Say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is For he is worthy, worthy. Yes, for he is good. Yes, he is For he is worthy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, yes, he is good. Come on, say it again. Say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Yes, worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is for he Come on, put those hands together. Come on, come on. Yeah. We're going to say it again. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is. Come on, say, oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks. For he is good, yes, yes, he is. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is for he is worthy. 
some noise and put your hands together. Glory to God, glory to God. I don't know about you, but ever since Pastor put that word of restoration in the air, amen, amen. Expectancy is in the air, amen. Revival is in the air, hallelujah, hallelujah. So if you're tuned in online, if you're tuned in watching us, amen, have an have a air of expectancy, amen. Glory to God, glory to God. I see we're fanning, we're going to get there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So while we're sitting down, amen, I want you to get in a heart posture of worship and meditation on what you want God to do tonight. Hallelujah. You've already made your request known unto him. Glory to God. We know he's the one that can do it. Glory to God. So as you're sitting down, sitting in a seat of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, Hallelujah. As you wind down your day, and God, we just want to tell you thank you. That we know it's already getting better. It's, it's already getting easier, God. And we know that you're moving on our behalf. Glory to God. Come on, for a few more seconds, wind down from your day. Whatever it was, whether well, you're on I-4, 27, and there's road rage going on. Hallelujah. Somebody may have cut you off. And glory to God. This is your time to be with him. Hallelujah. As a body, hallelujah, because you have all day to be with him, but it's your time to be with him. We say thank you. Come on, worship the Lord in this place, in your own way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of us feel that we're, we're being pulled five different ways and and this is a place that you can come and rest. Rest in his presence. Hallelujah. Lord, it's already getting better. It's already getting easier. God's already, he's moving on my behalf. Said it's God's already, he's moving on my behalf. All over the room, help me say that. Hallelujah. It's already, it's getting better. It's already, it's getting easier. Because God's already, he's moving on my behalf. Come on, say it again. It's already, it's getting better. Already, yes, it's getting easier. Cause God's already, He's moving on my behalf, and He did it for me. He did it for me. Come on, declare that tonight. He did it for me. God did. He did. Yes, yes. He did it for me. He did it for me. He did it for me. God did it. I said it's already, yes, it's getting better. Come on, say that. It's getting easier because God's already, he's moving on my behalf. He's moving on your behalf tonight, sisters and brothers. Say it again. It's already, it's already, it's getting, yes, it's already, yes, it's getting. Cause God's already, he's moving on my behalf And he did it for me Come on somebody He did it for me You praying for those grandchildren And he did it for me God did He did He did it Yes 
Make your prayer specific. He did it for me. Yes, he did. He did it for me. God did. God did it. He did. He did it. Yes. Yes. God Say it. I said it's already. It's getting better. Come on, tell yourself, it's getting easier because God's, what is he doing? He's moving on my behalf. Come on, somebody say it again, it's already, say, it's already, it's getting better. Yes, it is. It's getting easier because God's already, he's moving. We're going to declare one more time all over the room. And he did it for me. Come on, say that. Say, he did it for me. And I'm not ashamed to tell nobody that he did it for me. God did it. God did it. He did it. He did it. Yes. yes he did it for me. I said it's already, it's getting better. Oh, Jesus. It's getting easier because last time he's moving on my behalf. And he did it for me. Let us pray. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, as I stand before your people this evening, Father, I pray, Father, that you speak, Father. Let me decrease as you increase and let your word go forward, touching the minds and hearts of those who hear, Father, and helping us, Father, to know what your will is for our lives that we may be, may be able to go forward, doing what you would have for us to do, Lord. Father, thank you for those who have come, those who may still be on the way, Father, and thank you for those, Father, who came with the heart of expectancy this evening, Lord. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. These things we humbly ask right now in the name of your Son, Jesus. Has God done anything for you? Is he moving on your behalf this evening? If he is, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell on myself, too. Um, I know that when I left home, I was rushing, trying to get here to make sure I got here on time. Ran off and left my iPad, which I normally use as my Bible. And uh, I said, the devil ain't going to stop this. I ain't going back to get nothing. Just had surgery on both my eyes. I left my eye drops at home. Didn't bring any of them. But I'm trusting God that he's going to give me sight in these eyes to get through this assignment this evening. And uh, I... Uh, Thank you for being here this evening on behalf of the pastor, and I see the first lady is here, but the pastor called me and asked me if I would stand in his stead this evening, and I feel so honored to, be, uh, to do that. So thank you for everything. Amen. Praise God. I know that doing one of the Bible studies, um, I started giving a partial testimony about what God had done in my life, and I wanted to add a little bit to that by Going back to some of the scripture that the pastor has already been using uh, over, the past, uh, over the past few weeks, actually. And I would like for you to go to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 10 through 13. Because this sings very loudly to what took place in my life and what is taking place in my life even right now. Hallelujah. Philippians, the fourth chapter, 10th verse. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last 
you care, uh, care of my, uh, care me have flourished, uh, your care for me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I uh, speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I'm, I'm in, th uh, therewith I can be content. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Praise God. And you may be sit, seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, when I look at this, I know that uh, I started out uh, doing that Bible study telling you about a time that I, uh, that God had called me uh, to pastor, and I stepped away from that. But uh, I feel as though I completed that assignment that he had given me, but I still feel as though I stepped away a little too soon. I really do. Now, when you've been through something, then you have an opportunity to learn from it. Many people go through things in their lives, whether good or bad, and they never learn anything from those experiences that they've had. Well, believe me, I have learned. I have learned. I may not have learned from, to the same, ex same extent that Paul learned, because Paul went through many, many trials many tribulations before he could say, I have learned, I have learned. Now, uh, if you've never faced uh, the truth about anything, you miss an op you've missed an opportunity to learn. Sometimes we have to face ourselves because the truth of who we are, the truth of how we carry ourselves, the truth of what we have in us. When we look in that mirror sometimes, we can see something that we don't like. I looked in that mirror, and I didn't like it. I didn't like what I saw during that time. Now, when trials come, we must be ready to stand in the midst of those trials. As Christians, our sufficiency should not be in self, but in God. Because I can tell you, um, I, uh, we're not qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualifications come from God himself. He is our enabler by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, although I was uh, an avid reader and teacher of the Word of God, I allowed the devil to come in, uh, at, uh, come in through men, through church folk, and through religious organizations that discouraged me. And that was my fault because I surrendered what God had given me because of my humanness my humanism, because of what man had said, what man had done, how I was treated. But you know something, it wasn't all about me. And I didn't realize it at the time. I was looking at me and looking at how far I could go and how far I could do what God wanted me to do, rather than looking at the assignment that he had given me and trusting him that he would supply everything that I needed to complete that assignment. I got angry and began to hold grudges in my, uh, in my human side of me. I lost sight of my mission and my calling in God. Because when you get mad at people and you want to get even with them, you forget all about what God has for you to do, and you begin to move on your own power to try to do things. And that's, that's exactly what I did. After about a year, of uh, listening to the preaching and teaching of Pastor Babers here at Parkview Christian Life Center at the little church down here. God opened my spiritual eyes and my ears to the truth. I realized that I had surrendered what God trusted me with. I had surrendered a pastoral calling. And it wasn't that I just stepped away on my own. It was not letting the human side of me say, you don't need to stay here and take this punishment. You don't need to stand here and let people talk about you like that. You don't need to do, I'm telling myself these things rather than asking God, Lord, what should I do? What should I do? How do I stand in the midst of all of this? And um, God surrendered, uh, and I surrendered what God uh, trusted me with at that time. I took a good look 
in the mirror, as I said, and I didn't like what I saw when I looked in that mirror because I saw me giving up. I saw me surrendering something that only God could have given me. Now, I began to see that I was only hurting myself by holding on to this, uh, this disdain and this hate that was in me. Because believe me, I had hatred in my heart and I didn't even realize it. I really didn't. Because as I started that testimony doing Bible study, I came uh, one Wednesday, I think it was, uh, and when, uh, when Pastor was teaching, he was teaching on forgiveness. And I knew at that point I did not like what I saw when I looked at that mirror because I had not forgiven anybody who had done anything to me when I was calling myself pastoring, when I was calling myself leading a flock. I was not setting a good example afterwards because I did not stand to the test. I did not stand through the trial that God had given, uh, had given me. I began to see that I was only hurting myself by holding on to all of that. I was blaming others for my inability to let God's word sustain me in the midst of the troubles that I was facing. Now, I had given others too much power over my spiritual being. Too much power. Because when we walk around and we begin to talk about getting even with others and begin to look at them in a strange manner, we're giving them control over us. And we don't need to let anyone control us to that extent. We need to stand on God's word and know that he's got us covered on everything that he's called us to do. I've given others too much power. I've given others uh, so much power that I myself had, had gotten lost in the midst of all of it. And uh, I had given, uh, uh, though, uh, through that experience, I learned how to uh, be content when I'm verbally attacked and abused by the devil. And something that I uh, realized at that time, but I didn't take it to heart, to know that uh, it wasn't the people that was, that was doing this to me. It wasn't the organizations that was doing this to me. It was the devil working through them to come after me to stop what God wanted us to do. We had reached many young people during that time. Many young people gave their lives to the Lord, and they knew what God wanted them to do. So I'm praying that those young people that were coming at that time still are standing, standing stronger now than ever before, standing stronger than I did when I was attacked, that these young people can go forward and do and, and uh, complete the mission that God has given them. Now I understand that I was not being attacked by those individuals, but by Satan. Since then, I've followed the leading of the Holy Spirit and made amends with all of those who held grudges against me. I had to go back and even apologize to those who I was holding grudges against. No matter what they had said about me, no matter what they had done, it was up to me to go back and to do that. Don't you know when I did that, I felt the weight lift off of me. I felt that pressure lift off of me as though I was being relieved from all of that craziness that I had put myself through. And I could stand from that point to go forward uh, with the Lord. Now, uh, I, don't, I didn't go through half of what Paul went through uh, during his time before he realized or before he learned to be satisfied with what was going on around him. But you know something? I never stopped teaching. I never stopped doing the work that, the first work that God called us to do. And that was reaching out and, uh, to young people and actually feeding people. And through that feeding ministry, many people gave their lives to the Lord. Through that feeding ministry, where we were feeding at uh, Parkview, uh, Parkview Health Center here in Payne City and also in Lake Wells at a park. In that seven years that we did serve those hot meals, we served over 35,000 hot meals. And I know that God was pleased with that because we were following through on what he had given us. And since then, we have served uh, 20, uh, 20 to 25, sometimes 30 families every month delivering groceries and uh, boxes of groceries every month. And I know God gave us to do that. I will not let Satan pull me down from the work that God has given us to do from this point. 
And I know that if you take a good look in that mirror, if you see something that you don't like, it's time to start confessing at that point, Lord, I don't like what I see. Lord, it's time for a change to take place in my life. And Lord, I'm trusting you to do that so I can stand on your word and continue to go forward. Now, uh, who was I? At, at that time, I even told God when I stopped pastoring, I said, Lord, I don't ever want to pastor again. Don't ever give me another pastorate. But who was I to stand up and tell God what to do and how, what to do with my life and how to do it? I realized that was one of the biggest mistakes that I had ever made. When I backed off of that, I said, Lord, have, let your will be done in my life. Use me any way you want to use me, Lord, and I will stand for you no matter what. Now, uh, since then, I know that God has brought me here uh, to Parkview Christian Life Center. And by bringing me here, I know that uh, he has a work for me to do here as well. Uh, and what that work is hasn't been truly defined, but he has let me know that I need to stand on his word and continue to teach and preach his word whenever that opportunity arises. And I know that uh, since then, I've asked the Lord to restore me to his call in my life. It's hard sometimes to take our hands off of our lives and to trust God. God has us covered. We must understand that. If we only trust and believe in him, knowing that God will never leave me nor forsake me, now I can truly say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? That's the attitude that I should have had even back then. What can man do to me? They can talk about me. They can throw stones at me. They can disenfranchise me from what their organizations say that I should be standing on. But you know something, what can man do to me when God is on my side? And we must understand that when God is on your side, no man can take you down. No man can take you down. God can help you stand in the midst of it all. Stand in the midst of it all. Now, uh, I can tell you this, that the act of restoration is one that, I, uh, that I've been praying about. Because I know that God said these, these Wednesday nights are nights of restoration, nights of restoring. And uh, restoration is restoring to the rightful owner something that has been taken away, stolen, lost, or surrendered. And I surrendered mine. I surrendered my peace. I surrendered my joy. I surrendered my contentment when I was walking around with all of that discontent in my heart over the people that had hurt me. By the grace of God, never again will that happen. Only by the grace of God. Because now I know that the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit is teaching and uh, teaching me. And I have learned by the Holy Spirit and the dealings of providence. Because the dealings of providence is something that you'll probably, you don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. And providence, things can come upon you without you even knowing about it. But we must learn even through that. When unexpected things come upon us, let us learn even through those things and not give Satan place in our lives to pull us down from where God has us. Let us not do that. Now, the first step that I had to go through was to lean not to my own understanding. Now, because that was me, I was leaning to my own understanding, thinking that I knew what was best for what was going on at that time and not allowing those other people to come in and try to take over what I felt like God had given me to do. Because if you're not careful, uh, when you're pastoring, you'll have people come in and uh, try to change your vision. You'll have people come in and try to change your mission. You'll have people come in and try to frustrate you in every way possible. But you know something? God still can help you stand, even in the midst of all of that. He can help you stand in the midst of it. Now, um, this, uh, whatever the circumstances are, God has us covered. The first step was to learn not to lean to my own understanding, but in all my ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct my paths. 
That's why I'm so glad that I ended up here at Parkview because I did find out that God has something for us here. And I know that he's directing our path, uh, and not just one path, our paths as we go forward, even here at Parkview. Don't ever let Satan come in and begin to shake you down and to make you feel as though you have nothing uh, that God can use. Because uh, I know that Paul himself had to go through many, many things, but he could stand after going through all of that and say that I have learned, I have learned uh, in whatever state I'm in, therewith I can be content. I can be content. That, that's a big statement. That's a big statement. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit working on your behalf, and you don't have your heart tuned into God and your ears open to what the Holy Spirit is saying, that's something that you will never be able to do on your own. Never, ever be able to do on your own. But God can help us get through it all. Help us get through it all. One thing about this, when I told God that I never wanted another uh, pastorate, uh, show you how God works. He opened the door for me to become... Um, for me to become the mayor of a city. And it was kind of like he, he laughed at what I had to say because he said now, because I heard very clearly, now you have more people looking at you as the mayor of this city than you had when you had the congregation in the church because the church was a small church, probably 25 people, 25 to 30 people. But I felt as though we uh, had done what God gave us to do because like I said, people were saved doing that ministry. And uh, when we were looking at young people, like uh, Minister Mahoney was saying, we have to look out for those young people. And we need to be on the preventive end of reaching out to them instead of uh, waiting until they get in trouble before we begin to do that. And when we began to reach out on the preventive end for those kids, every Sunday morning, I was there cooking breakfast for all of the kids that uh, came that lived in the projects. And we had uh, lock-ins where they would come and lock in overnight, play games, watch Christian movies, and be able to discuss what they were watching. We talked with them about sex, drugs, gangs, violence, teenage pregnancy, everything that young people face in this society. We brought to them from a biblical perspective. And many of those young people heard, and they began to move forward positively after hearing those words. And I know that God gave us that for them at that time. But I was told that uh, we were spending too much money on kids because we had a computer lab for them. We had uh, a game room for them after they finished their homework, they could play games. Uh, they said that I should have been saving that money to buy a building. And I guess I was a little bit arrogant because I asked them, show me a building that Jesus ever bought, you know? And I don't think Jesus ever bought a building, okay? And it's very seldom you ever saw him preaching in the synagogue. But he was touching lives all along the way. And that's what God has given us to do. Let us touch those lives of individuals that need it and continue to stand strong against the opposition that comes against that. Now, I guess some, might, some people might say that I was being disobedient to my leadership at that time. By, by not listening to what they had to say. But uh, I can tell you now, sometimes when you are involved with uh, national Christian organizations, they want you to do what they want you to do and nothing more. That's why I'm so glad that PCLC is not under some national organization that's coming in here trying to direct everything that takes place here. God has stepped in. He's interceded here at Parkview. And let the pastor have autonomy to teach. Let the pastor have the opportunity to reach out and to establish ministries that's going to touch people's lives and help people overcome the oppositions that are against them out here in this world. So I tell you now, God has used us. He will continue to use us. And now I can confess like Paul said, I have learned, I have learned to do these things. I have learned that God has all the help that I need in the time of trouble. And I don't have to go running to man. I don't have to go running to some money organization. All I have to do is turn my faith and my face to God. 
and God will do the rest. Hallelujah. Wow. This is something that has been on my heart uh, for a while, and I know that uh, God has forgiven me for any wrong that I had uh, in, uh, in that situation. He's forgiven me because I asked him to forgive me, and I went back and I apologized, as I said, to all of those that I had that disdain in my heart for. And believe me, that was not an easy thing to do, especially after you've already, what they call, been smart-mouthed and told them that uh, God is a higher authority than they are. So they didn't like that very much. And uh, I, I hate to say it, but it was a thing like, uh, here it was, I was an African-American trying to tell the big shots what I was or wasn't going to do according to the way that I felt God was working in my heart. And uh, that was not something that went over very well at all. But I still stood to that charge. And I still stand to it today. When God speaks to your heart and he gives you something to do, don't let anybody back you off of it. You stand and you move forward in it. Because I can tell you now, there are many ministers here at uh, Parkview Christian Life Center that uh, God has brought here. And with all the ministers that are here, pastor has an army behind him. He has an army that's ready to move on his command because every army must have a commander. And God has given him command over this particular ministry. And by him having command, we should stand at attention, waiting to be discharged, to do the duties that, we're being, that, that are being rendered unto us. And I know that with all of us here as ministers, we'll probably never see all of us up here preaching and may not see all of us down here preaching. But I tell you what, God has his timing for every single thing. And as we stay faithful and continue to let him run and rule our lives, it's no telling what God might do. Because some of the ones that don't preach here, God might give you a church. And you'll end up preaching in, in, a, in a, a, a sanctuary that he gives you and bringing many people to Christ. Because it is not all about us. It's all about Christ. And if we can keep preaching Christ and teaching him everywhere we go in everything that we do, then we know that we'll be able to stand to the charge that Satan brings against us. And let us not always blame Satan for everything, because sometimes it's about the choices that we make ourselves. And sometimes when we make those bonehead choices, we have to look for somebody to blame it on, you know? So it's not always Satan's fault, and it's not always somebody else's fault when something takes place in our lives. The only time we'll be able to actually learn, as Paul did, is to take a look in that mirror, take a good look at ourselves, and be able to understand what God is telling us about us and the assignment that he's giving us. And if we can ever do that, if we don't ever be honest with ourselves, how can we ever be honest with anyone else? We can't. Let us stand up, be honest, take a good look in that mirror, and know what God is doing. Because, uh, I, that, and I didn't give you the title of this message, but it is, look in the mirror. Do you like what you see? If you like what you see, it better line up with God's word. Because if it doesn't, you're just lying to yourself. God's word will open up that mirror and let you see everything about yourself from A through Z. He knew everything about you before you were ever placed in your mother's womb. He saw us from A through Z, from the beginning to the end of our lives. He's the only one that knows when we're going to expire from this earth. All of us have an expiration date. Stamped on the inside of us, but God is the only one that knows what that expiration date is. Let us not get caught during that period of our expiration and then try to get busy for him. Let us get to work while it's day. For when night comes, no man can work. Hallelujah. And it's daytime for each and every one of us in this house this evening. Let us step forward. Let us go forward. Let us do the will of God. And let us touch lives. Let us change lives. And let us be the ones that God will use magnanimously in everything that he does. Let us not, to, not try to promote ourselves. Let's not try to get ahead of anybody. Let's let God lead us 
And as he leads us, we'll be in much better shape than we would if we take our, take our lives in our own hands and try to lead or push ourselves into something. God knows better for us what's good than we know for ourselves. Now, I didn't know that things in my life would turn out the way they did and the way they have and the way they're still unfolding right now. But I can say that I have truly surrendered to the Lord. And I said, Lord, whatever it is that you want, that your will be done in my life. I even thought about running for, uh, running for county commission. And I knew that the only way that I could run for county commission was to change my party affiliation from no party affiliation to Republican in order to do that. But I knew that was a lie. I knew the truth wasn't in it. And I knew that I could not do that because I would have been dishonest with myself and dishonest with what God had placed in my heart. And uh, you said, well, okay, you're not Republican. I'm not Democrat. Because if you look at both of those political platforms, both of them have something wrong with them, okay? Because when you look at the Democratic platform, you're looking at all kinds of uh, horrible things that are taking place as far as homosexuality, same-sex marriages, and all that. And you know God's word speaks against that. So how can I stand on a platform like that? But to say that I am nonpartisan says that I'm going to listen to God's voice. And I'm going to go the way I feel like God is leading me, even with my one vote. And I'm hoping that each and every one of you here is listening to what the Holy Spirit says to you, even when that time comes for you to step in that booth or whatever in order to, uh, to do that vote. Because God can't be wrong. We can be wrong every day of the week, but God can never be wrong. But we have to be in tune with him to know what we're doing and what he would have for us to do. So I ask you once again, look in the mirror. Do you like what you see? And if you don't, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Because he's already let us know that we have to mend our evil ways, get rid of the things that are in our hearts and our minds that don't line up with him, and begin to let him work his work in our lives. Now, I know that I only touched a little bit on what Pastor has been teaching on, but I had to let that be a personal thing for me when I brought it out about learning, learning how to be, uh, to be abased, learning how uh, to abound, learning how to be hungry, learning how to be full, learning how to go through all of these things in our lives that we may face and know that God still has us covered. How many of you know that God is in control of everything, everybody, at all times? Hallelujah. And there's nothing we can do to change that. But we can get in step with God's word and begin to march according to his word that we can be included in his will and continue to live that abundancy that Christ said that we would have. Because he said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill the law. And he said, and the devil is here to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but I'm here to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And some of us still aren't living that abundant life that God has promised us. Why is that? Because if God promised it and we're his children, you're not going to sit in daddy's lap and daddy tell you he got you covered and then you not believe what he's saying. You're going to believe what he says, and you're going to allow his word to go forward in our lives. God is so good this evening, and I'm going to, I'm going to stop right there and uh, just let you have time to reflect on what God is doing in your life and how he's doing it for you, because I don't ever want to be caught again uh, in the situation that I was caught in before, where I stepped away from God trying to take things in my own hands and trying to get even or get retribution on others for what they had done to me because that is not something that will ever pay off. It won't pay off with your trip to heaven. It won't pay off with your uh, uh, connections in the community. It won't pay off with your children. It won't pay off husbands and wives with each other. If we begin to try to rule against each other, rule over each other, 
because of that. God has us covered, and no man can ever cover us as well as God does. So I'm going to stop there and thank you very much this evening, and I thank the pastor for allowing me to come forward this evening for this short time. Amen, amen. Let's give Minister Falk a hand as he has spoke a great word to us. And let us look to the hills from which cometh our help to the Lord in this instance. Okay. Now at this time, if anyone is here today, you're on the outside of safety, and you have heard the man of God speak so dearly out of his heart, and you are saying that there's something in your life that's not right, and you feel as though that I have been trying to give my life to the Lord. But for whatever reason, I cannot do it. Every time I try to walk up front, something stops me from walking. Well, tonight is your night. You can be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, set on fire, and you can believe and trust in God. So if you're here tonight, and tonight is your night, and you say, it's my time, it's my time to change, it's my time to give my life to the Lord. Then if you're that one, just come forward, please. Now at this time, make a change in your life. Please come forward. We'll give you a few minutes to think about it. It's very crucial, you got people, that we try to live this life for the Lord and with the Lord. You young people, it's now time that you give your life to the Lord. You're not too young that you can believe God, that you can give your life to the Lord. It's a very serious time. You heard me earlier when I opened up church service. Youth and young people, death has no age on life, you all. Some are young, and they're going on. We funeralize 11, 13, 15-year-olds, and there are some 80, 90-year-olds that are still living. So if you would be that one tonight that would step out of your comfort zone and say, tonight is my night. I'm going to give my life to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Will there be one? All right. We've done what God say do. Amen? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Parkview. Is there anyone here for the very first time at the Parkview Christian Life Center. This is your first time you've seen it on TV, Facebook, or whatever, and you said tonight I'm going to Bible study to Parkview. Is there any first time visitors tonight? Everybody family? Everybody saved, sanctified? Everybody filled with the Holy Ghost? All right. Well, now at this time, everybody can play a part in this. Since nobody played a part in the other two, Everybody can play a part of this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's offering time. How many of you are excited by giving tonight? Just, just come on and bring it up to the altar. We're going to go ahead and give tonight. Then after we give, we're going to pray over the money. And then I guess we'll go home. How many enjoyed themselves tonight? I mean, enjoy the word coming from the man of God tonight. Amen, amen. Let the church say amen. Let us take a moment and lift up this man of God for what he has allowed the Lord to do with him tonight. And... As, as Pastor has been talking about restoration, you know, redemption is beautiful and necessary. But when you look at restoration, 
It means simply that we have been replanted and we can bear fruit again. Restoration means that we have been replanted because of the relationship we have with the Lord. He spoke about his own personal walk. So I encourage us tomorrow to tell someone about how God has replanted you and restored you when you were once lost and did not know who he was. Amen? Amen. God bless you. We're going to say a Let us bow. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gifts of, that have been given and, is, and received. We thank you for the spirit, O oh Lord God, of giving because you gave to us first and you gave us Jesus. And Lord, anything that we can do, O oh Lord God, as we walk this earth, help us to understand there is power and growth in giving more than receiving. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for the mighty gift of God that you have given to us through the word and through our pastor, through this army of ministers and believers that are here to help him hold up his arms, Lord. We thank you, Father, for those who are here who are able to give. And we continue, Lord God, to give you all the praise and glory. In the perfect name of our Savior, Jesus, we pray. And all of us together say, amen, amen. All right, everybody. The word has been spoken. Amen.